Hey guys, welcome. I'm Catherine and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. My friend Christina reached out and asked if I would please do a video on raising rabbits in wooden hutches and specifically what I like and dislike about our hutches, which is, that's pretty easy for me to give you a list. Rabbits was the first livestock that we brought home. This is the first hutch that we built. You can see it's got a little wear and tear here on the side. I do need to go in and sand it and stain it. I do that about once a year just to maintain it and keep it from falling apart. I live in the desert southwest, so it's arid here, it is dry here, and wood requires some maintenance if I'm going to keep this in some sort of functioning state for the next several years. So we bought all this material brand new. The hutch itself cost us about $350, and this is the first thing that we have ever built on our homestead. So all things considered, I'm really pleased that it stood the test of time. There are some things that I would definitely do different had I had the experience and knowledge on the front end that I do now. But like they say, uh, hindsight is 2020. So these are my breeder rabbits. I've got a total of five up here in the front yard, and I call this my rabbit breeder village. So this hutch here is three foot by eight foot. We went with these dimensions because it happened to match up with the roll of hardware cloth that we purchased, and that is mistake number one. Do not use hardware cloth. Uh, typically, it is half by half. It's like an 18 gauge, really thin, can be hard on your rabbit's feet. So I, I'm going to put that with the caveat that some rabbits have thinner fur than others. So if you're raising like Rex or Velveteen Lops, you're, you may encounter an issue with sore hocks, which is where they actually develop sores on the flat parts of their back feet. So do keep an eye on that, regardless of the type of wire you're using. You should always maintain good health for your rabbits. That should be your top priority. And so you need to do physicals on them regularly. Just make sure that their nails aren't getting overgrown, because that is also an issue that can cause sore hocks if they're having to sit on their feet funny and distribute their weight in uh, unnatural ways. So you can alleviate that on wire cages. And in fact, I would recommend it regardless if you're in a wooden hutch or a wire cage, it's providing them something to get up off the flooring. I use, in the summer, ceramic tile. This also is a heat trap, so even if you don't cool these, just the act of it being in your rabbit's cage, they can sit on it and it will absorb some of their own body heat, thereby cooling them. So um, I do not use frozen bottles. Rabbits are extremely susceptible and vulnerable to heat. They do really well in cold conditions. So depending on your environment, you will definitely need to take into consideration not only where you're going to locate your rabbits. Ours are facing south because uh, we are in very southern state. And so therefore, the vast majority of my sun is either overhead or to the north in the summer. But this, during the winter, will optimize the light coming in from the south. So they'll get some heating over the summer, I mean, sorry, over the winter, but maintain relatively uh, cool conditions in the summer just due to orientation and where we have them located on the house. Because they are blocked, they get the east, uh, the first morning sun coming up from the east, but they are shaded from my house for the most brutal part of the afternoon sun. So do keep location in mind because that is going to be your biggest help as far as maintaining a good climate as far as temperature for your rabbit. Airflow, that is so important. If you have them airtight and contained, uh, they can actually succumb to the ammonia coming out of their urine and you need to make sure that they have plenty of room in order to have, uh, they will designate a corner within their hut as their bathroom. So you want to make sure that they have enough room that they can not only have a bathroom spot, but they are not trapped and limited to that bathroom spot. According to Michigan State University, meat rabbits, and I, that's what I'm raising is meat rabbits, and mine are about 10 pound rabbits, so that's what I base my square footage on. They say that they need a minimum of four square foot because I'm all about the well-being and happiness of my animals, we decided to double that. And in fact, on our future hutches going forward, we made them even larger than this. This is my smallest hutch by far.
and I'll turn you and show you my favorite hedge because it's actually right here next to this one. And I'll show you the difference on what we did and why. So airflow, super important. This is open on the bottom, has this entire front open. Had I done this again, and I'll show you on my other hedges, we leave an entire side open as well. If you do live in an environment where you get a lot of blowing snow or rain, uh, you can, this is an advantage of wooden hutches. I will take seed sacks over the uh, winter when we expect heavy snowstorms, and I'll staple them. But you do need to, again, leave room for airflow. You do not want to seal them in tight. That is so important. So if I were to do this again, I would not use hardware cloth. It, it works well on the face of a door, not so well on the base as far as the flooring. Uh, this actually has stood up. This is its eighth year in use. So I cannot complain about the wire because I haven't had any issues with sore hawks. And I am just now experiencing some areas where my wire is starting to break. And we are just now looking at replacing that wire. So it's given us a good life. But the cost difference between a half by one wire, which is what you should be using, versus the half by half hardware cloth is minimal. Go with the half by one. And be sure that you put the half by half on the top side. That'll make sense when you get it. Uh, so that they are spacing their paws on the half inch side of the wire versus the one inch, just because it gives them a little more support. So as far as, and let me show you this. Okay. Each of my rabbits has a nest box, which is this thing here. I provide them even for my male rabbits. Typically, you would put them in with a breeder rabbit when she is about to kindle, which means have her kits, baby rabbit, about two to three days before you expect babies. I kinda, I'm a rogue rabbit breeder, I guess, but I keep nest boxes in with all my rabbits all the time because being a low on the predator prey scale, I mean, they are bottom of the totem pole, they like to hide. And so I have found that my rabbits are much more calm if they have an area where they can get away. You can see I'm standing here talking. I've made her nervous because I'm pointing at her. She doesn't know what I'm up to. So she's in there hiding. Well, she needs to have that opportunity if a coyote were to be here sniffing around the base. And that's another lesson. You want to make sure you build your hutches high enough that it keeps them safe from potential predators. I could have things come by and try and nip at their toes. Again, that's another good reason to put something in there underneath that they can be able to get up off the wire. That'll not only protect their feet, but it also gives them a space to be predator free. Uh, anything and everything wants to eat your rabbit, be it neighborhood dogs, neighborhood cats, snakes. Snakes love baby rabbits. Not so much the big rabbits, but the baby rabbits. Uh, coyotes, raccoons, you name it something is trying to eat them. So just keep that in mind because they are skittish animals by nature. So I've found just in my own experience, giving them some place to hide has really benefited them as far as their peace of mind, their shoes look. So as far as feeding and watering, I have opted for dog bowls. I have been through, and you can see, I have, I'm not sure if you can see it. On that one, I do have a day feeder which is that little metal uh, feeder that hooks on the doors. I do like them. My rabbits tend to destroy the wire on the bottom. And so as they do that, I've just been replacing them with dog bowls. An advantage of dog bowls is that over the winter, uh, if you're using them for water, it's easy to dump out the ice pucks and refill. Whereas if you're using something like water bottles, you have to take them in and thaw them. The little nipple on the water bottles uh, tend to freeze a lot faster than the water in the water bottles themselves. So you may have an issue where you have liquid water, or so you think, but your wa uh, rabbit is still unable to drink. It is important that uh, water be available for rabbits at all times. In fact, if they are not drinking, they will not eat. And if I ever have any sort of health issues with my rabbits, first thing I start checking is their water supply. They tend to drink more when I provide them a bowl versus a water bottle. So for what it's worth, that's my experience. I do want to show you some damage. So when you build with wood, rabbits like to chew. Can you guys see this? So she has pretty much eaten this entire 2x4 here for this door. 
and we're going to have to remake it because she's down to almost bare wire right here. Uh, an advantage of building it yourself and building out a wooden wire is we can just remove this door, replace it, we're good to go. We don't have to build a whole new hut. So it is kind of um, kind of like Legos. We can take it apart and put it back together. Same thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut off the wire on the bottom here and just staple new wire to the frame. Oh, <coughs> let's see. Oh, I should tell you this. When you do build, keep in mind that you will want to leave room to be able to put the nest box in and out of the door. If you make your door so small that you can't access it as far as putting in the nest box, it's also going to make it hard for you to get in and maneuver and manipulate your rabbit. It also makes it harder to clean. So I would recommend big doors. You can see this is the entire face of this hutch for this girl. If you have tiny doors, it makes it hard to reach into the back corners of your cages as well. So keep that in mind because as you're building it, that doesn't necessarily cross your mind until you have the experience of not being able to put a nest box in or not being able to reach your rabbit because she knows that if she can run to the far corner that you can't get in there and grab her. So big doors has been a huge advantage here. Let me show you. So this is my buff here. And then one of my does. And I want to show you. So this is not terrible. And I'm not even sure that I can show you. But this is where my wire is breaking right here. And so it's not a big gaping hole, but it is starting to break right where it's attached to the... So right where it attaches to the wood, it is starting to break. And that will be an issue, especially when she has kits because you don't want them to fall through. Attachments. This one here is my least favorite. It's a little slide bolt. This one here, I like the half, and I like this. If you live in an area, see this is really secure. This, I do have concerns that my rabbits could wiggle the door and actually pop it open. So all of our hutches going forward and all the other hutches that we built have the half and the clip. If you live in an area where you are concerned about human predators potentially taking off with your livestock, with this half, you could actually put a little padlock on it to keep your animals secure so that nobody can walk off with them. I, that's kind of foreign to me, but, but I do have lots of friends who have experienced that issue, so that's why I bring that up. So let's see, what else do I want to pass on to you guys before I pop off for the day? Oh, I made notes. Okay. Talking about temperature, so rabbits definitely do much better in the cold than they do in the heat. There are some things that you can do in order to ensure that your rabbits will handle the summer well. Uh, like I said, orientation is a huge one, but you can also breed your rabbits for heat tolerance. And that is exactly what I do here, and that is what I recommend. So breed your rabbits over the summer, pick your babies with the biggest, longest ears because they thermoregulate through their ears. And so the bigger the ears, the better their ability to cool themselves. So that's just kind of my tip and trick there on the front end. As you are going into your breeding season, know your climate, know the conditions that your rabbits are going to be experiencing, and then breed for that. So because a healthy stock is a much better situation than trying to battle. All right, guys, I hope this was of help. Oh, shoot, I want to show you my other touches. Okay. So this is my favorite one here, and it is actually three foot by four foot, and you can see it's got enough room. You can see that little shelf in there. I'm actually going to just take it out to show you because that's probably going to be easier. So because we built them relatively high. We've also given them things to play on. So this is what I would consider a nursery hutch. So it's big enough that my mom rabbit and six to ten kits can run around with comfort, without being cramped, 
for the six to eight weeks that I have the kids in there with the mom. So do keep that in mind. If you are breeding rabbits and you are going to have babies, do provide enough space for them to be able to live comfortably. And this is, like I said, this is one of my favorite hutches. I've got another one back here. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's the back side of it there. But another nursery hut. Okay, guys, I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was of value. If it was, please like and share this video. And if you have not yet already, please subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.